In this tutorial, we're going to make my very first tutorial series, the camera intent application, work on versions of Android OS 7.0 and later. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, um, a number of you have probably been having problems using the camera intent video tutorial series on Android version 7.0 and later. That's because they've changed it. In the original application, which is over two years old, um, you could freely pass the um, file URI to another application so it could save a picture to that address and we could open it up in our application. Now in Android 7.0, you need to grant temporary permissions to allow other applications to use that file. And so that's what we're gonna do in this tutorial series. Okay, so first things first, let me run this application as is. Let me go to my build.grader file to show you what I mean by setting our versions. So we here, here we have it here. So as you can see up here, I've set the target SDK version to version 25, which is Android 7.0. So once I set it to that, it's gonna control how we share our files with other applications. So I'll just run the camera intent tutorial series as is, and let's see what happens. And let me just record that so you can see what's going on. So application started up, I wanna take a photo, and we've had a crash. And if we look at the call stack here, and we scroll on down here, I'm gonna highlight this here. What you can see here is a far URI exposed exception. And if I, let me drag my Chrome across to here. And if we click on a far URI exception, it explains to us what might cause cause it and it says it's thrown when we expose a file to another app and it's a file uri which is what we're currently doing in the original application and down here i highlight this but it says instead apps should use the content uris so the platform can extend temporary permissions and somewhere around here it should mention using a file provider down here you can see use file provider. So file provider is going to allow us to generate a temporary permission in the form of content URI as such. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating a temporary URI using a content provider. So we'll get started in doing that. So we want to go into the Android manifest file here and inside our application tag, just below the activity, we're going to create a file provider. Well, it's actually called provider. And this is going to require a number of different types of tags here. First one we're going to do is set up an Android name. And this name has to be done in this format, which is going to be Android. v4 content dot file provider. And if you've typed that out correctly, you won't have any red errors on that particular line. Next one we need is authorities. Think of an authority as an ID used to represent the data in this particular case that we're going to share. 
Okay, so the naming conventions for authorities will be, and you can set it to whatever name you want. It's uh, they do provide a recommendation of using the package name, so we're going to do that. And so I can sort of get my application name by using this particular format. That will be application ID. Closing braces. And I'm just going to append file provider on the end now. We need a couple more things. We're not going to export this, so we can set this to false. And grant permissions, we're going to set that to true. In other words, we're going to grant permissions on the files we want to share with other applications. And that's all we need to do on the provider end. Next step here is we need to specify the location of where the files are that we want to share. And we're going to create metadata here. And metadata does require Android name. And again, this has to be done exactly as what I'm typing out here, Android support. And it's file. Provider pass. And we need to set up a resource name, which is basically the location of the file that represents the pass we're sharing. So we use Android resource for that. And I'm going to set up a folder for XML. And the file I'm just going to call file pass as such. And close that. Okay, that's all I'm going to need to do here in the Android manifest file. Note we've got an error here, file pass, can't resolve it. That's because we haven't yet created that. So the next step is to create the file pass. So if we go into the resource here, first thing I'm going to do is create a resource directory. And I'm just going to call that XML. It is there. XML rec rec represents at XML there. Now I'm going to actually create the file path. And we're going to, we actually have to call this file path because that's what we specified in the Android XML file. File path.xml. I haven't just had that just yet. Okay, so we want to set up here a tag called pass. And inside here, there's a number of different tags here. I'm going to just set, call this as external path. And now we call path, and I'm just going to set up the primary root directory, or you can set up subdirectories if you enter the name here. I'm just going to set, make this simple, we use the primary root directory. And we need to give that a name as well. And I'll just call this media images. And just close that tag. Okay, now let's go back to our X, uh, Android manifest file. And you can see here, it's got a typo in the name here, but that's not going to crash the application. But the actual errors are gone away now. Okay, so the last step in this is to actually generate our temporary URI to pass to a camera application. So we need to go back into the camera intent activity here. And we need to scroll on down on our, this particular line here is the current implementation of where we're passing the URI from the photo file. That's a file URI. Now we need to gen generate a temporary content URI, just to temporary share the file with the camera app. So first thing I'm going to do is create a string just to get our authority. Authority, should we call it? 
And from here, I can actually get the package name. I need to call get application contacts, get package name, and then append that to file paths. So we'll just quickly go back to the manifest file here. So we just basically want to match that. You could actually call your package name there, but it's slightly easier. We just have to remember file provider there. dot file provider, which should be the matching authority name from that Android XML file. Okay, now I want to get my content URI. So I'll just call it uh, image URI. Now here we need to make a direct call to the file provider, get URI for file. Contents is this, and authorities, and last part is the file itself. Okay, now I'm just going to comment out this line down below here. And recall our intent, put extra. And here we're going to pass it the media store extra output. This time we're going to pass in that image URI here. Okay, so basically we're passing in a temporary content URI, which the other application should now be able to use and we should not see the exception. Now let's try running this just to see if it works. And let's just record this so you can see what's going on. Okay, now let's press the take photo button. Now the application successfully started because we're providing a URI with the temporary permissions. Take photo. Save that. And we've gone back to our original application with the photo. Okay, so that completes this tutorial. So basically we learned that for versions of Android OS 7.0 and later, if you wanna share your application files to other applications, you're gonna to have to set up a temporary URI in the form of a content URI. And we can create those by using the file provider as demonstrated here. So that's something to be aware of on later versions of Android OS. On the previous versions, there was no check enforced on this kind of thing. But for enforced security on Android applications, you do have to be aware of this for Android 7.0 and later. And that concludes this tutorial. If you enjoy watching my tutorials and you want to be getting notified of the forecoming tutorials, click on that subscribe button just below me. And to the right of me is just where all my social media icons are. So every time I release a tutorial, I upload Go code to GitHub, I publish an article on my website, or any of the other activities I'm involved in, I will announce them on my social media accounts. Um, directly above me is my website. It's a good place to watch these tutorials because not only can you watch the tutorial, you've got the reference documentation down below, as, uh, uh, as well as descriptions of how to get the code from GitHub. And I don't respond to questions on YouTube anymore. Um, I'd spend the next year just reading the questions without responding to them. But if you do have a question, you really do need to get a response from me. Contact me on CodeMentor for paid consultancy support. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial series. Thank you for the time, taking the time to watch this, and bye for now.